Welcome to the Unengage Agent, social media and news for real estate agents. Yeah, and our first topic is the big news that Redfin is leaving NAR, you know, the National Association of Realtors. Right. Um, so that's quite interesting. Um, they they have like obviously a, a good number of realtors, about twenty four hundred, and uh, those agents are will now be not part of NAR, uh, not because they're I guess realtors. They'll be with real estate agents, the, you know, which uphold the standards with code of ethics, and so that would be interesting. So those agents would not have to abide by, I guess, not right. If you're not, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess it won't be part of the code of ethics. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe Redfin will have their own kind of kind of code of ethics sort of deal. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I was dealing with the lawsuits regarding the broker commissions and and just. Kind of, um, you know, the growing outcry, but, you know, they are still like the biggest lobbying group in, in Washington. Right. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see what's going to happen in the next couple of steps. Will other kind of companies or b big um, brokerages just leave NAR, you know, um, would, would KW or, or REMAX, you know, Think they joint forces or anything like that? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it depends if they if they feel they're getting the value from NAR or not. Um, I think uh, you know. I know NAR is not perfect. I know they've done. Uh, there's there's um, some things, some positions they've taken on issues that I don't agree with. Um, but uh, I, I I do think that they are doing a lot to kind of support the 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 industry and helping realtors, you know, survive out there. Um, yeah. So it's kind of, kind of a uh, interesting kind of w way to see. I mean, the important thing to kind of realize is, is that the industry is always changing, right? It's not going to be the same. Yeah. Not to say it was not the same was, it was not the same five years ago, uh, before social media. It's not the same as ten years ago or twenty years ago before the internet. It's even last week. You know, it goes so quickly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just one of those evolving things, and and you have to kind of stay nimble, stay um. And kind of um, focus on the uh, focus on the I guess the smaller issues. Focus on helping individual clients, helping you know your buyers find the right home, pipe and sell or sell their home, and right. the the bigger stuff kind of sorts itself out. You know, and if right. if things change, um, then you gotta roll with it. Change and and you roll with it. Yeah, for sure. All right. So I think our other topic was um, Canva Magic, uh, the new updates with Canva. Yeah, they introduced like Magic Studio. Um, they, you know, they've been doing some AI stuff recently, and this is kind of their latest like iteration of that. Um, yeah. They have, you know, they, just if you don't know, they have um, things called like Magic Design or Magic Presentations, where you can tell it like, "Hey, make me a presentation on." five best reasons to, to, to move to Tampa Bay and it will it'll auto generate all the content for you and and even with that content you can still customize it you know reward it and then that goes to with magic right where you can highlight that that group of text and have it rewrite it for you in whatever tone um, you would want it to sound in whether it's more professional or layman's terms or like a fairy tale princess story you know <laughs> that's pretty cool yeah and, and even like the, you could have a brand voice so even though you have your brand colors different ones that you kind of save in canva right. you can have your own right. branded voice so that way any content it generates it'll be in that kind of voice if it's more which is perfect conversational for Instagram, right yeah. yeah or if it's more if your if your business is more um you know detail oriented you want specific you know um you know or words or lingo and kind of have it kind of have it there, which is quite, quite cool. Yeah. And I mean, if you're not using Canva, I mean, we do have it. I think it's in our creator tools, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we have a link uh, on our yeah. website uh, to, kind of, to kind of check it out. Um, it, it, amazing. It, I'm just it, amazed it, at what it can do on and it just keeps going, you know? So it's pretty mm -hmm. neat. Yeah. It's just, it's become definitely a, a indispensable part of our, our workflow. Um, tool that we use for creating any sort of marketing that we need. Uh, Static posts, even, you know, for... Yeah, social media, media posts. 
Um, they they, they do have some vid <laughs> flyers. Um, yeah, they, they they do have some video uh, capabilities. It's not as um, full fleshed as a full like dedicated video editor. But if you need to throw something in quickly, you could do it. Yeah, and even like you know making reels and TikToks, you they have the templates right there. Yeah, you build everything, add the music, and upload directly from Canva to the. I don't utilize that that much because I, I tend to build within the app, but I would, I, I'd like to do more with that, with Canva at least, because I feel like it's got so many options. I don't know if you've seen the, 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 the magic expand feature. Do you know what that is? No. Uh -uh. So, so you have a photo, um, and, um, and there's something and you need it to be wider or whatnot. Um, but there's nothing, the photo's already like, you know, so big. It'll use AI to kind of fill in the missing the parts. It may wow. it may not be accurate to what's there, but it'll yeah. at least give you something to kind of fill in the area. Um, so I thought that was yeah, pretty cool. We've seen different, you know. I mean, with AI, I mean, when it comes to like proof of anything, like anything can be generated, you know. So crazy. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magic edit. You can. Someone's holding a, you know, a handbag. You change that to, you know, um, you know, headphones if you wanted to. It's, you know, uh, the capabilities are are kind of endless, and and it also it's good as far as brainstorming, which is what we use it a lot for. We use it like, hey, give us some ideas on this, and we'll kind of go through and refine it. Um, just with ChatGPT, we'll we'll use it as a great brainstorming kind of. Cool. And I'm sure really AI it is. is similar to that. Uh -huh. um, All right. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, quite cool with AI stuff they're adding in. And well, I've got to try some of them out. Yeah. We'll make some videos on that too. Yeah. But, you know. Well, all right. So, where are we at now? The Verge on yeah. TikTok? Okay. Yeah. So, the the, the Verge um, uh, uh, had an article and a video. Um, talking about um, YouTube Studio's new AI feature to help you generate topic ideas and like outlines for, for potential videos. So it'll kind of like go through what, what videos you're currently making, seeing what's working elsewhere and kind of help you with that. And how, does, and how is how is that going to work? Or is there going to be like a notification button or, <laughs> you know? So, it, so if you go to the YouTube Studio and say, hey, I, you know, I'm looking for ideas and it'll say, okay, well, this video on this... Uh, community did well you should be making more videos like that maybe in this kind of you know like that or it'll maybe uh, you know we'll look into it more but maybe it'll say hey um you know another agent another area did this type of video maybe you should make something kind of similar mm -hmm. um you know obviously the downfalls of ai is 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 who's driving the content is it the person now or is it the the, the algorithm driving what's being made. Oh. I think the algorithm probably, right? <laughs> Doing what it uh, does. But you could use it to your advantage. You use, you know, definitely always try to put your own I mean, totally. It. If, it's, if it's breaking it down for you and what you need to be doing or what you should be making for, you know, it's got the, the data, the data to prove yeah. that, right? So. Yeah. And any, and any, obviously any of these types of videos, you, you definitely want to make sure you put yourself into it and make sure um, you make it known that that it's your voice and it's your um. It's not all way. automated. Yeah, it's not all automated because right. at the end of the day, they're they're hiring you as a person, and and um, they need to they need to have that connection. Yeah, totally. Alrighty. Um, I think the next was about um the sellers in the United States and why people are selling their home, right? Through a Florida realtor magazine had an article on this. Yeah. Florida realtors had the magazine. I think it's from a Redfin, um, kind of study, um, okay. that, uh, this is a, uh, 10% of listings are sellers being called back into the office. Um, mm -hmm. so as more workers are, are, you know, not being able to do work from home as, as, as before they have to sell their home. Uh, it's obviously state. a lot a lot moved out of state too right you know yeah yeah i mean we saw a, a big influx of people you know moving to florida uh as they were able to work from home um if these businesses start changing their their policy regarding that 
they're going to have to sell. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's something to kind of think about. It's not something we've ever had to think about before, but the motivation of why someone's selling is definitely important. And people always ask also, and everyone does have a different reason for, but that's really a high number. That's interesting. You know, well, I mean, it was kind of unknown too, right? Because everything yeah. happened so quickly. You know, I mean, a lot of these businesses promise like, hey, this is the future. This is what you can be doing. Go live anywhere. And then, um, the, you know, the, they decided to, to make a change. Um, it's a shame, though. I mean, I, I wish it was yeah. more like an option, you know, versus... Of course, you know. yeah. Or if they, if they say that you have to be there two out of three days, well, that doesn't help you because you're you in a different state. So now you have to... Right. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 my, my hope is that more and more businesses see the value of work from home, seeing that this leads to kind of, you know, more happier employees because they're not sitting in hours, two hours worth of commute time. Traffic, uh, yeah. You know, and, and it, it definitely leads to a lot better work-life balance if you're if you're able to have that extra couple hours a day. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some other percentages, right? Yeah. Oh, so they um uh they they also listed a couple other ones. Uh, nineteen point three uh said they plan to sell, um, and relocate to relocate to a, live in a place that's better aligned with their views on social issues, which is obviously uh. It's just idea if if you know if you want to live somewhere that where your neighbors you know so feel at home at home you know yeah yeah, wanna, yeah. yeah. With that now do that that you know that leads to some pass um nineteen percent said the lower taxes uh seventeen point nine said uh concerned about safety and crime and um yeah you know, obviously the the biggest one is the the thirty three Point eight percent said they need more space. Um, we all need more space, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's that's always uh, the number one factor why people need to move or want. Yeah, to usually to growing, growing, yeah, growing families, families, families. combined, combined, you know, um, yeah, combined families, multi generous, well. yeah, multi generational family that need that extra room and space. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That's these are all really, you know understanding reasons why people need to move and good for you to know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. All right. And I think our last topic is uh, YouTube shorts. You can now add a link to a, to a YouTube video, right? So it's just a link within YouTube. It's not outside. I don't believe. Yeah. Uh, Correct. Yeah. So that's, that's quite uh, uh, popular because now you can kind of uh, do a long form content, say this like podcast or even just a uh, community feature. And then when you do make a short out of it, you can have it linked back to the original long video. Or if you want to link mean, to- You some... can make the short within the YouTube, you know, video itself. And I think it has a create short, you know, but I don't know, I'm making that up. But I know there's a yeah, quick way to just do it from within the video itself, you know? Yeah, but even if you're doing it somewhere else, you can uh, now go back and add those links afterward. Yeah. yeah. Um, which we'll probably do with this video. We'll probably make a couple of different shorts and then. Um, we'll, and what's we'll the other back. software that you used for the shorts? Was it Oak? Oh, no. There was one. Uh, that... we, well, we, we, yeah, we, um, there was a couple of different AI, like auto yeah. cats. Uh, Opus, Opus, Opus Clip was, was yeah. the one we, we used. Um, I saw a couple of other different ones, um, but well, uh, those those are what they do is they'll take a long form video, and they'll cut it up in different shorts, and they'll um, they'll score them. Say, hey, this is like a really good short, and then the ones that aren't so clear, they'll say, hey, this is not so good, and then, and then it gives you captions a right? Yeah, they and add captions, description. descriptions. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure. If I, I'm not sure if Opus adds descriptions or not. Um, Oh, yeah, it might. It might. Um, but yeah, so all these kind of tools to kind of multiply your content. Um, this is probably the best way to kind of put it, right? Yeah, totally. Um, well, I think that's it for this week, right? That's it. Have a great one. I'm Tony. And I'm Patricia.